In the Italian Alps, on a late September day in 1991, two hikers came across what seemed to be a contemporary mountaineer encased in ice, but it was actually a relic of ancient human history. They had unearthed Ertzi the Iceman, a Copper Age mummy dating back to around 3,300 BCE. Resting at 3,210 meters above sea level, Ertzi's body was entombed in ice, perfectly preserving his physical form. His exceptionally well-preserved remains offered a unique window into the life of prehistoric people. Radiocarbon analysis dated Ertzi's existence to about 5,300 years ago, positioning him as an ancient kin of modern humans. Ertzi received his name from the Ertztal Alps, his discovery site, reshaping our comprehension of early European inhabitants. He had a sturdy physique for his time, standing at 160 centimeters tall and weighing 50 kilograms. At the end of his life, Ertzi was a man in his mid-forties, around 45 years old. He was clothed in a bearskin cap, leggings of goatskin, and a coat crafted from sheep and goat leather. His footwear, designed for cold weather, was waterproof, broad, and lined with grass, an early version of snow boots. Ertzi wore a belt equipped with a pouch containing various tools, including scrapers and drills. Genetic testing determined that Ertzi had brown eyes and suffered from Lyme disease. Among his artifacts was a U-handled copper axe, indicating an advanced technological period. His archery equipment included a quiver with 14 arrows, two of which were battle-ready, showcasing his hunting abilities. Analysis of his stomach contents revealed he had journeyed across varying elevations and ecosystems. He possessed a versatile flint dagger sheathed in a woven case. He showed signs of wear and tear typical of an active and aging person, including joint and spinal issues. Evidence of charcoal on his body implied he had experience with fire-making and utilization. His skin displayed 61 tattoos, arranged in 19 patterns, potentially for therapeutic purposes like pain relief. These tattoos were strategically placed over stress-prone areas of his body, such as the lower back and legs. A deep hand laceration and a cranial injury indicated he may have been involved in a skirmish. Dental ailments such as cavities and decay afflicted him, common in societies reliant on agriculture. The lethal arrow wound in his back was a pivotal find, suggesting a violent demise. He is the earliest known person to carry the Borrelia burgdorferi bacterium, making him the oldest recorded case of Lyme disease. The sequencing of Ertzi's genome has provided extensive data about his ancestry and the people of his time. Ertzi's final moments were marred by violence. His assassin appeared to have taken him by surprise. Ertzi likely met his end from a long-range shot about 30 meters away, indicative of an attack from a distance. Moments before his demise, Ertzi was resting calmly on the glacier, his bow not prepared for immediate use. Roughly half an hour prior to his death, he was taking a break, consuming a substantial meal, indicating no immediate sense of danger or urgency. A critical piece of evidence was a hand injury sustained one or two days before his death, likely in a conflict. This hand wound is typical of an active defensive injury, like grabbing a knife to deflect an attack. Ertzi had no other defensive injuries, suggesting he emerged victorious from the initial confrontation, possibly occurring in the valley. The hypothesis is that the mountainous killing was a continuation of the earlier conflict. Knowing he was outmatched in close combat, Ertzi's killer might have stealthily pursued him up the mountain to shoot him from afar. The assailant left behind Ertzi's valuable copper-bladed axe and other gear, indicating the murder was not for material gain, but likely driven by intense personal animosity. Analyses of his intestinal contents showed he had covered significant distances prior to his death. 
Holland's studies from his digestive tract enabled the tracing of his final movements across various elevations. Besides the arrow in his shoulder, a severed artery suggests he might have succumbed to blood loss. Ertzi's personal effects and clothing offer insights into Copper Age apparel and tools. His antler-made retoucher was crucial for honing his stone blades. High fat content in Ertzi's body implies a diet rich in energy. Eggs of whipworm in his intestines signified he endured parasitic infections. Subsequent studies indicated a gap of four to eight hours between his last two meals. Cereal remnants in his stomach hinted at the agricultural practices of his community. He also suffered from arteriosclerosis, a condition typically linked to modern lifestyle habits. Ertzi's finding necessitated a re-evaluation of prehistoric clothing technologies, uncovering complex weaving methods. His possession of non-local flint tools suggested active trade and exchange in the Copper Age. The posture of his body at the discovery site implies he was resting, possibly overcome by exhaustion at his time of death. Ertzi's preserved blood cells are the oldest complete human blood cells ever identified. His remains were transferred to a research facility maintained under precise conditions to prevent decomposition. Ertzi is exhibited at the South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology in Bolzano, Italy, where visitors can view him. Exactly who killed Otzi remains unknown, but Ertzi, even in his untimely death, has given us so much rich and valuable information about his time and life in Copper Age. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.